Hi guys, welcome back to the channel where today we're at Premier Sports Customs installing the V-Charge 7 Tether Charger. Let's get into it. We've got an existing consumer unit up here. We're going to come out of that and install some surge protection and then we're going to use the existing containment to get us to the edge of the wall. We're going to pop out along some containment outside and then we'll drop down to the charger and come in the bottom of it. cable coming out of the open soffit which is where actually the wall and the roof don't meet so we've got a nice gap coming straight through which means we don't have to drill any holes um, so now we're going to bring the cable down do a flat 90 on the wall and then swoop onto the cable ladder um, using these d-line clips they're what you use all the time um, i don't think there's any better out there to be honest they're brilliant so that's what we're going to do it's a double or single skip before i make a wally of myself So we're just looking to get the charger mounted. We've got some heights to contend with here. We want to be mounting it no lower than 750 to the bottom, no higher than 1200 if there's an interactive screen, or if not, as high as 1400. And that's for part M building regs, so people in a wheelchair, or potentially in a wheelchair, uh, can access it when charging their vehicle. So that's what we're going to aim for. We've got some nice measurements to aim within, and we've got the contrast of the white and gray wall here, so it should look pretty good. Oh, so we can fold it over. Yeah, because then when you bend over, then the arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. <laughs> the um, yeah, arm will support it then. So, this is one of the D line clips that I was speaking about earlier, pre mounted, ready to go. They're brilliant, they're fire rated, they're quick, easy, and a really nice secure fixing, and they look way better than a traditional cleat. So, they just wrap around like that. You can go to whichever hole you want. There's a few settings. And you just pop it in, wrap the arm around, and that pins it in nicely. So just before I unbox this, I just want to apologize for the noise, but we are in an active workshop, so there's a bit of a racket going on. Um, let's unbox the V-Charge charger that Alex from V-Charge has kindly brought down for us today and see what's inside the box. So this box is um, really good design because it's made to be reusable or recyclable. Uh, and then within inside the box, looks like we've got some installation instructions on how to install and set up the charger. Then we've got a keep me guide, don't throw it away. The keep me guide is for the customer and that'll come with some RFID cards and the pin for setting those up, which is cool. We've got our template here for fixing the back plate, which is nice with the holes to push out and then you can mark that up so you get it in the right spot. And then underneath, let's check and see if we've got all the gear in here. So here we've got the type two tethered charging lead. And then here we've got the V-Charge 7 charger We've got our CT clamp for load management. They even give you your fixings and your ferrules. We've got to ferrule the cable up. It's a six mil multi-core. And then the actual charger itself, which is quite a nice design. Um, yeah, it looks pretty sick. You've got the socket on the side there to plug the lead into when not in use. Then your cable entry is the bottom left. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty nice. And we'll let you know what we think at the end once we've got it all on the wall and uh, set up. So what we've got here is a four-way metal enclosure that's going to go beneath our consumer unit. And within this, we've got a Hager surge protection device. Uh, it's a requirement that vehicle chargers have surge protection, and it's best practice to put it in on any new install anyway. What this will do is protect the vehicle and the charger from lightning strikes, surges in voltage. And if it ever gets called into action, it's as simple as pulling these modules out and actually replacing them. So it's quite a simple process when that happens. Hopefully it doesn't. So we're installing this vehicle charger off of this consumer unit. It's one of four in the building all of which are fed off of the main MCCB panel board, which is behind us over there somewhere. Within it, we're going to be putting a three-phase MCB, which will supply our surge device beneath. And then we've got a type A RCBO single phase for the V-Charge charger. So what we're doing here isn't the best thing in the world, but that's how it was held on before, because um, they've formed the lid to the uh, trunking. So we're gonna have to cable tie that back on. It does the job, but uh, it's not the best way of doing it. But So what we're gonna try here is a technique I've seen on eFix. We're gonna put the stuffing gland in, 
and then we're going to put our sharpie pen within the stuffing gland do it up so it holds it in place and then when we put that up against the board that gives us our pilot bit for the the hole we're going to drill out in the perfect position So this is a product we use a lot, the Marksman. They do the green and the black version. The black version can shoot in a bit more. So if you've got like an awkward outside light you're putting up, but you can't fit it down, it sprays in a bit further to mark the wall. We use this one a lot for like vehicle chargers and mounting things like this. It just gives you all the fixing points. Um, say you're buggering up your marker pen or a pencil or whatever on the wall and blunting it out. But really good product. Look at that, bang on. Bang on, son. Twist it around, level it up. Beautiful, wonderful. So we leave this until we finish the other end, I think. What's that? Terminating all this now. We'll do all the dead stuff first, then we'll yeah. come back and liven this up afterwards. Yeah. Just gonna see if we can find the guys to ask if we can turn off the power and then we'll just get it done now. We're just gonna go and find them. It's going to the charger. It's a template. So you might put it up to the wall, level it out, and then you have your fixing holes. So you should know where to, well, it should be level and should be easy to do then. Basically what we're doing here um, what Pete's doing, should I say, and I'm talking about is we're getting some tails through for the surge device. That'll be supplied via an MCB up here on a three-phase way. So we'll take out these three singular modules, put our three-phase MCB in, which will be 32 amps, and then they will connect into that and into the surge. Mod cotton models. They happy, yeah? Yeah, the guy, Reese. Yeah. That, that guy did come out and say we can turn power off, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. We are good to turn off power. This being a surge device, you want to keep this as short as possible. You don't want to be doing fancy loops or anything like that. Obviously, bend the cable before you strip, strip it back. You don't have to do that. So that's gonna basically go like that, in it. I'm just gonna get this strip back. Then basically we've got to make off the charger. Um, we'll probably lay it on there or something, make it off because it basically goes into the back and that's where the plate is that you take off for tamper-proof reasons. So we get it stripped back, made off, ferrules on and it can go on the wall. I call this the wazzy wazzy woo woo and then straight down. <laughs> we'll just hop back on, we're good. The good thing about the formula that Doncaster Cable used to make the cable is it means it's really easy to strip. And uh, let's actually show this. They've now put this rope in. So now I've done that, I should be able to just pull that straight down. And uh, basically, I don't have to pull it down. Now I can just pull it off and it should leave a nice lip, hopefully, where I've gone round. Yeah. Can, we, um, can I use your other cutters as well? <laughs> it's going to cut these right back because we know they're way too long. Good thing about D-lines is they're so easy to undo again and they're fire rated, which is uh, also good. So now we've got that a bit lower down, see, we can rest the charger on here, I reckon, and then we'll um, get that tamper plate off the back and we can make her off. So we're just about to terminate this. I just want to explain why it's in the back of the charger. So the plate that I've taken off uh, on the back has some tamper-proof screws and then being at the back of the charger, it means you can't tamper with it because you'd have to physically take the charger off the wall to get to this. Um, so that's why it's on the back. It makes it maybe a little bit more complicated, but it's got some good reasoning behind why that's the case. So it makes complete sense to me. So we're going to get that made off, get it dead tested and then get it on the wall. So I'm just checking these terminals are undone for the CTs because actually when you tighten them, it actually pulls up opposed to down. So you want to make sure they're fully undone and that you're actually getting the cable in the right area of the terminal so that when it does do up, it's making a good connection. 
So we're just going to do our dead test on the charger. The cable's back in at the board, linked through on the live core and the CPC. Uh, so Pete's just nulling the leads on our QTEC tester, and then we're going to clamp on to the live or line and CPC, get our R1, R2, which is 0.13 and we know that reading is completely satisfactory, so we can take that link out, terminate this, and then get it back to the wall. Three, four. Get this back, we'll do a ZS via the EVSE tester. Okay, so that's nicely in. I'm trying to make sure that goes up nice and tight. It's always important just to check the manufacturer's terminals as well, because it is possible that they can become loose in transit. A little bit fiddly, but we'll get it in there. All right, we're in. Beautiful. So that'll slot in like so. Beautiful. Oh man, sweating. So this is the surge device that's all installed. We've got our cables coming down to it, identified through L1 through to L3. They go up into this three phase MCB up here, C32. Um, this is a Cat5 that's gonna be extended and joint to the um, CT clamp for the charger and then that will clamp around the phase that we're on within the consumer unit. This is our type A RCBO here with the cable going out and for V charge, they recommend a 40 amp type A instead of a 32. So that's all in. Um, we're just having a look at the incoming earth reading to the building because it's a little bit higher than we expected. So we're just investigating that and then we'll be able to get this all littered back up once we've resolved it. The charge is all installed guys as you can see we've turned it on and i'm now going to walk you through how easy it is to get this commissioned so we're going to get this set up now in the installer app so you need your bluetooth on for that and we want to connect to the charger once we've done that it's then going to ask me for a passcode which is unique to this particular charger so i just need to type that in and once we've got that in we're through to connecting up to the wi-fi and getting it ready for the customer to use. So we've just come inside to get a better signal to get this connected up. We're connected via Bluetooth, and now we want to look at adding the Wi-Fi, uh, which we've got here. We're just going to type in the password. So we've got that typed in. We now want to go down, select the output current. If we've got the charging mode, we want to be the app, so that's how they're going to use the charger. If you've got no signal for whatever reason, you can set up to use just off of RFID. Um, but in this instance, we're fine with the app. Leave all the 4G blank. That's a future uh, expansion that they might have where you can connect to 4G. Uh, so output current 32. Home power current, so that's the incoming power to the board they're coming out of, that's 100 amps, so that's fine. And then we want to set power distribution to enable. Now we've done that, we can go down, power current 100, meter address one, sampling method CT, perfect. So that's now done, I've set that up in the installer app and now we can download the actual user app and get that set up as well. So this is the customer app guys, let's take a quick look into that. It comes as a standard to meet regulations with smart charging scheduled, so you can turn that off if you don't want to charge under a schedule. Likewise, if you do want it on, you can go into that schedule, change the times, you can select things like use XX Solar to charge it if you have solar panels, you can change your electricity supplier and the unit rate. You can also go into things like configuration, which is nice and simple, you've got your time zones, you can upload a photo of the charger if you want to. More importantly, authentication. You can go in here and you can uh, select that to required and that can be in the terms of you authorize it in the app when charging or via one of the two RFID cards that come pre-registered to this charger. So we're gonna leave it on not required to do our testing and then we'll set it back to required at the end. It's a nice and simple app to use. The front screen here, it will show you that the charger's turned on and it's ready to be used. It's not currently in action. And then down here you'll have your monthly charging stats so you might have to download those for a report or to claim that back on the business and then killer what's used all in all really simple app right so now we're all installed let's plug it in and check it works get it plugged into this lovely porsche taycan so we're all done guys if you're interested in a charger like this or any other charger for that matter look in the description below and contact us today we'll see you on the next one